a lot of us have heard this phrase a lot that don't work for money but let the money work for you but we may have not fully understood this is what it simply means get your welcome to our second video on financial literacy if you missed the first one i'm going to put the link under the description so just wait and i'm going to link it at the end of this video if you are new here please consider subscribing because you're going to be sharing a lot of useful information that can help you to start run and grow your business and not only your business even your own personal finances my name is dr emmanuel amukon and i'm the founder of marvel's dead hospital so let's get started there are basically four ways in which people try to generate wealth the first one is getting a job yes we all need to start from there even if you want to move to another section but we all start here getting a job and i would urge you to treat your job as a business because i know most people don't really think about their job as a business but consider the fact that you have to put some input in terms of your time energy and sometimes money to move to and from that job so you should be able to sit down and calculate and see if you are making profit or not you might decide to change your job or you might decide to scale up so that you can add more but wealth creation number one way is to get employed being an employee simply means that you are exchanging your time and energy for money in other words you are completely working for money and in addition to that someone else is the one responsible for determining how much you should be paid depending on how much value you are taking to the marketplace or to the place of work and by far this is the hardest way to get wealthy or to get rich for that matter because as a person your energy is limited and your time is also limited one of the reasons why it is very difficult to become rich or create significant wealth as an employee is because in addition to your time and energy being limited this category also is highly taxed and that also reduces on the income that you are going to have to spend to invest elsewhere to, to grow your finances so trying to get rich by this route is far far the most difficult but it is possible because there are people who earn 1 million dollars a month so it is possible but it is for extremely few people the next method of wealth creation is route number two and that is self-employment unfortunately most people confuse this with a business but self-employment is not much different from being employed because both are exchanging their time and energy for money the only difference is that when you are self-employed you are not guaranteed income like a person who is employed when you are employed you are guaranteed at the end of the month or at the end of the two weeks you are paid but when you are self-employed you determine how much you are going to pay yourself and when and sometimes that means no income but also other times it means a lot of income in case your self-employment venture is doing very well so who are the self-employed self-employment includes everybody who works in their business whether you are selling tomatoes by the roadside or you own a shop a grocery store or you are making chapatis or you have a clinic like uh, for us who provide dental services as long as you are working in that business providing the service or actively participating you are basically self-employed becoming rich or growing your wealth this way is slightly easier than when you are employed but also extremely difficult remember income is not guaranteed so it requires a lot of financial discipline and hard work but it is indeed possible to become wealthy when you are self-employed even though it usually requires you to take your profits and invest it elsewhere route number four is to 
have a business. Now, as I stated earlier, most of us actually think that we own businesses. Yet in actual sense, we are self-employed because we work in our businesses. But when you have a business, it means you are not exchanging your time, your expertise, or your energy for money. You are basically setting up something and then you leverage other people's time and other people's energy to make money. Now, getting wealthy or creating wealth in this way is, is much easier than the other two because you can simply increase the number of the people who are working in your business and you enlarge it and your income will also enlarge. By having a business, we mean that you are using other people's time, other people's energy to make money for yourself. And in most cases, you might also be using other people's money. If you go and borrow and then you invest in your venture and make money for yourself, it means you are also using other people's money to make money for yourself. This one is a highly recommended method for growing wealth because it is much easier to become wealthy this way. Even though it is much riskier than being self-employed or being employed. Route number four, investing. Now, this one is very interesting because you can actually skip the other two and move straight from being employed to being an investor. Because in investing, it means that you are simply taking your money, putting it somewhere else to make for you money without your involvement. In, in other words, your money is working for you. You are no longer working for the money, but your money is working for you. A lot of us have heard this phrase a lot, that don't work for money, but let the money work for you but we may have not fully understood. So how do you do this? You do this by simply getting your money and you buy shares in other companies. When you do that, your money is going to produce profits in that company. Then for you, you get paid at the end of a particular period, maybe annually. So you could buy shares, you could buy bonds or government treasury bills and things like that. Or you could even buy what we call certificates of deposit, what people call CDs in brief. But at the ultimate peak of this game is where the big boys play. Here, you must be a high net worth individual. In other words, you must be having money that you are willing to risk and lose it without getting a heart attack. At this level, you identify a promising startup and then you invest. Once the startup grows and reaches a particular level, then you can get back your money through an exit. So the common exits are IPOs. If you are in Uganda, recently MTN had an IPO and a lot of common people bought shares. But who was selling the shares? you probably didn't know, but the, the people who were selling those shares are the ones who had initially invested in MTN when MTN was still a startup. So that is called an exit. The other exits we have could be acquisition. The startup you invest in can be sold to a bigger company and then you get back your money with your profit. Or it could be a merger, it depends on how you have agreed. Or it could also mean that the startup founders take your money on condition that they are going to pay you back with interest and then you keep a small percentage of ownership of the original company. All those are called exits. But this level of the game is played by very few and very smart individuals because it is a high risk, high benefit zone. So if you don't have money that you are willing to lose, you do not take this route. You can go for the other three. But this fourth route is the ultimate route of wealth creation. This is where the big bucks are. If you have liked the information in this video, make sure that you check out this playlist here because you are going to absolutely love the information you get in there. And I'll see you in the next one.